Although viruses vary in size and shape, all are made up of the same basic components. An inner core of nucleic acid, which is either a double or single strand of DNA or RNA, surrounded by a protein coat or capsid. The individual protein subunits of the capsid are called capsomeres. Some viruses, such as influenza, are further enclosed by a membrane called an envelope. This consists of proteins from the cell membrane or nuclear envelope of the host cell, as well as viral proteins. Many viruses also have glycoproteins protruding from their capsids or viral envelopes. These enable a virus to attach itself to a host cell. The attachment of a virus to a host cell is a specific process. The outer surface of a host cell contains many receptor sites of a certain shape. In order for a virus to attach itself to a cell, it must have surface proteins that are complementary to the receptor sites on the cell's surface. That is, the cell's receptor and the viral glycoprotein must fit together like a lock and key. As a result, most viruses can attach themselves to and enter only a few kinds of cells. The retroviruses, which include HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, are known for having the most complex reproductive cycles. The prefix retro means backward. This refers to the way in which retroviruses use an enzyme called reverse transcriptase to make DNA from RNA, the reverse of the usual cellular process of making RNA from DNA. To understand this, let's look at the way in which HIV reproduces within a human helper T cell. Within the HIV capsid are two strands of RNA along with the enzyme reverse transcriptase. After the glycoproteins on the viral envelope bind the virus to the receptors on the surface of the helper T cell, the proteins of the capsid are removed by enzymes and the viral RNA and reverse transcriptase enter the cell. The reverse transcriptase enables DNA to be synthesized from viral RNA. Once the viral DNA is formed, it may enter the host cell's DNA to form a provirus. The genetic code of the viral DNA is then transcribed into mRNA molecules, which travel to the cytoplasm of the host cell. In the cytoplasm, the mRNA molecules are translated into HIV proteins. These proteins, together with some of the RNA molecules transcribed from the provirus, are assembled into new viruses that bud from the host cell. The cells responsible for recognizing and destroying foreign antigens are white blood cells called lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, like all other blood cells, originate from stem cells in the bone marrow. Later, they become one of two kinds, B lymphocytes, also called B cells, or T lymphocytes, also called T cells. Whether a lymphocyte develops into a B cell or a T cell depends on where it matures. Lymphocytes that become B cells mature in the bone marrow, while those that become T cells mature in the thymus. In general, there are two kinds of immunity. Antibody immunity, which is also called humoral immunity, and cell-mediated immunity. In antibody immunity, when foreign cells or substances, such as these bacteria, invade the body, they are engulfed by macrophages and B cells. The non-self antigens of the bacteria 
are then pressed into the self antigens on the surface of the macrophages and B cells plasma membranes. Once the bacterial antigens are protruding from the surface of the macrophage, a type of T cell called a helper T cell recognizes and binds to the antigens on the surface of the macrophage. After reading the shape of the antigen, the helper T cell divides to form several clones, each with the specific antigen. The helper T cells then bind to and stimulates B cells with the same antigen acquired earlier through the direct contact with the invading bacteria. Once they are stimulated by the helper T cells, the B cells divide to form plasma cells and memory B cells. The plasma cells produced by the stimulated B cells produce antibodies. This diagram shows the structure of an antibody. The end of the antibody is designed to fit only one shape of antigen, making the antibody very specific. An antibody produced against a certain bacterium, for example, is not effective against the flu virus because the shape of the antigen on the surface of the flu virus is not compatible with the shape at the end of the bacterial antibody. As antibodies are produced by plasma cells, they are released into the circulatory and lymphatic systems. Here, they bind to the foreign antigens to form antigen-antibody complexes. These complexes are engulfed and destroyed by phagocytes. As the bacteria are overcome by the antibodies and phagocytes, another type of T-cells, called suppressor T-cells, release substances that cause the plasma cells to slow down and eventually stop antibody production. This controls the immune response. Antibody immunity provides protection from free bacteria and viruses as well as toxins. If the cells of the body become infected with a virus or if parasitic worms or protozoans invade the body, the other type of immunity, cell mediated immunity, becomes involved. Shown here is a cell that has been infected with a virus. Notice the viral non-self antigens on the surface of the cell. In the first step of cellular immunity, the virus infected cell is engulfed by a macrophage and the viral antigens are pressed into the self antigens protruding from the macrophage's plasma membrane. Next, a helper T cell binds to a self, non-self antigen protruding from the surface of the macrophage. The activated helper T cell then stimulates another type of T cell called a cytotoxic or killer T cell. The stimulated killer T cell produces more killer T cells as well as memory killer T cells. It is also possible for killer T cells to directly bind to a self, non-self antigen on the surface of the macrophage. If this occurs, the killer T cell bound to the macrophage may produce additional killer T cells and memory killer T cells without first having to be stimulated by a helper T cell. Once activated, the killer T cells bind to and tear open the cell membranes of the virus infected cells, thereby destroying both the cell and the virus. This same mechanism of binding and tearing open is also used to destroy invading protozoans and parasitic worms. Just as an antibody immunity, suppressor T cells shut down the production of killer T cells once the foreign cells are brought under control. If the same antigen happens to appear again, the memory T cells 
just like the memory B cells, will direct a secondary immune response and quickly destroy the invader. This diagram compares and contrasts cell-mediated immunity with antibody immunity. Okay, this is from my biology book. Things here. Uh, um, acquired immune deficiencies range from temporary states that may arise from psychological stress to the devastating acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS, which is caused by a virus. Um, it says that opportunistic diseases as well as neurological damage and physiological wasting can lead to death from AIDS. Because AIDS arises from the loss of helper T cells, both hum humoral and cell-mediated immune responses are impaired. This loss of helper T cells results from infection by the human immune deficiency virus or HIV, which is a retrovirus. 